Welcome to Electra Online. There's another type of cluster called the open star cluster, up as opposed to the globular star cluster. And the difference, well, they're different in every respect, actually. But the main difference, of course, is that the stars are not nearly as tightly close together as they are in the globular cluster. They're much more farther apart. So therefore, the sense, the sense when you look at them, they're an open cluster. The, the stars are not very tightly bound to each other, as well as tightly bound to each other gravitationally. They also are made out of much newer stars. Global clusters are very old clusters generally. Open clusters are very young clusters. Matter of fact, there's very few that are over one billion years old. So the vast majority are a half a billion years old or less. In some cases, just a few million years old. So they're typically just recently formed and they're made out of fairly new stars as well. So, Let's take a look at some of the, well, we have a few pictures here. Let's take a look at the pictures first. On the right, of course, we have the beautiful Pleiades Open Star Cluster M45. It's about 440 light years from here, and you can actually see it with the naked eye. Matter of fact, it's the only cluster that is clearly visible with the naked eye. It's actually beautiful. And if you take some binoculars and look at it, you'll see several hundred stars clustered together, about 250 stars, and it's actually an incredible sight to see that. And any binoculars can just go ahead and uh, see that. Um, where would you look for it? It's kind of about, oh, I'd say about 10 degrees or so further west than the Orion constellation. So when you find Orion and then you kind of look towards the, the west, you'll see actually about maybe 15 degrees. So between the cluster and the Orion constellation, you have a very large star called Aldebaran, which seems to be chasing the Pleiades open star cluster across the sky. So you have the open star cluster, you have uh, Aldebaran behind it, and then you have Orion behind it. So that moves across the sky. This time of the year, well, this is now April, uh, you have to get out there pretty close after sunset because that's when you see the Pleiades kind of disappearing towards the horizon. Earlier in the year, January, February is a much better time to go see the uh, Pleiades star cluster. But again, it's a young cluster. It's about 440 light years away. Another picture right here is the uh, 35 million year old cluster. Again, 35 million years is very, very young for anything in the universe. It's about 5,000 light years away. It's known as M52. And so, yeah, there's thousands of open clusters. Now, where are they typically located? Well, they're typically located within the galactic disk. They're not like the global clusters, which are like a swarm around the galaxy. Open clusters are like any other star, any other nebula. They're within the galactic disk and mainly within the disk and mainly within the spiral arms, not so much within the galactic bulge. They contain anywhere from about several tens of stars to a few hundred stars. So the Pleiades open star clusters, very typical star cluster with about 250 stars. They're contained within the galactic disk, so they don't go wandering around outside the galactic disk. And you can see that 50% of them are less than 200 million years old. So only half the clusters are older than 200 million years. 2% are more than a billion years old, which means very few of these open clusters make it past a billion years. And why is that? Why are there not a lot of old open clusters? Well, the gravitationally, they're not tied together very strongly. Several hundred stars that are at some reasonable distance apart from one another do not act on one another very strongly gravitationally. So when anything else comes along in the neighborhood, through tidal effects, those stars could simply be pulled away from each other easily by getting close to a spiral arm or something like that, where there's a much greater concentration of stars or much greater number of stars. And so these open clusters eventually just get completely pulled apart where you can no longer see them as a cluster. So that's why they kind of age out. They just age out because they get pulled apart. They don't age out because the stars go through their life cycle and turn into white dwarfs or anything like that. Um, the luminosity, the maximum, the brightest open star cluster that we know of has a luminosity of about 50,000 suns. Now that's unusual because they're typically not that large. They don't contain that many stars. And the reason why they have such a high luminosity typically is because they tend to be made of larger stars than the sun. At least some of the stars within the cluster are larger and they then give off an enormous amount of light, making them much more luminous than you would expect them to be if that was just an average uh, set of average size stars. The average luminosity is about 500 times the luminosity of the sun. Again, indications that the average star is a little bit brighter than the sun.
the average mass of the star is about 50 times the mass of the Sun and so that means that you, even though you have some smaller stars within the cluster the fewer larger stars really outshine the rest of the stars and make these open star clusters relatively bright for the number of stars that are present. The diameters are typically pretty small, they're about five light years across. So when you think about that the nearest star to the Earth is a little bit over four light years away, the closest star, so when you have an entire cluster of maybe 50, 100, 200 stars together in a region that's only five light years across, that does mean it's a cluster. They are fairly close together relative to the density of the stars around us here. Again, they're typically younger stars. Some are just a few million years old. We even find clusters with T Tauri stars that haven't really fully developed into real stars yet. So you can see that they tend to be fairly young clusters. And um, we've already placed over 100 of these clusters. As, you know, for, by studying them, we've placed the stars on HR diagrams to get a feel for the age and so forth. And of course, the turnoff point is much higher on the main sequence because it is made of much younger stars. And when you have stars that only stay on the sequence for 10, 20, 50 million, or 100 million years, they start turning off the main sequence. So we can tell by placing the stars on an HR diagram that these are relatively young star clusters with stars already turning off at very high points on the main sequence. All right, so that's the story of open clusters, a very different kind of cluster. Uh, there's some beautiful clusters with more differentiation in color. Of course, they don't have the grandeur of the large global clusters that contain hundreds of thousands or millions of stars. But they're pretty anyway, and hmm, they're just kind of temporary, aren't they? They just stick around for a little while, and then they get pulled apart gravitationally. So, do they live in the same halo as the rest of the globular cluster? Clusters? So do, uh, do the open clusters live in the same region as global clusters? The answer is no, not at all. They're very different. The global clusters is kind of a swarm of a bee. A bee is around the, the beehive, so to speak. They form a kind of a circular, spherical region. These open clusters are strictly within the disk of the galaxy itself. They don't venture outside of them. And they, they rotate, they revolve around the, the galactic center, just like all the stars and the nebulas. They're just simply part of the galactic disk, and they predominantly live within the spiral arms. Live, it's kind of a term, but yeah, so <laughs> that's why, where they're located. So why do you say they get pulled apart? By whom? By what? So why do they get pulled apart? Well, because even though they're a cluster and they do form some gravitational attraction between them, it's a very weak attraction. So if they happen and you know, they move somewhat independent of some of the other regions, so when they start getting close to a region where there's a lot of stars, like a denser region of the spiral arms, they start feeling that gravitational force and it starts pulling them apart. So there's a lot of like, it's kind of like a tidal effect. You know, the way the moon pulls on the earth, well, star groupings pull on other star groupings, and as they move relative to each other, they feel what they call like tidal forces, and those tidal forces tend to pull things apart, and that tends to pull the open clusters apart. When you say pull them apart, you mean pull the stars away from each other, not pulling the star apart. Yes, yes. They, it, I'm not meaning to say that they pull the stars apart. They still the start. They pull the stars from each other. That causes them to no longer be a cluster. Yeah, that uh, that would take a lot of force, kind of like a black hole. <laughs> and what are those two pictures next to M52? Yeah, so these are, so this picture right here is a picture of a, uh, of a very, very young star cluster that contains, I believe it said, seven T Tauri stars, which are stars that are in the making. So there's, they still haven't reached the nuclear fusion stage yet. So we can see that these are, and there's still a lot of dust and within the nebula that kind of obscures the stars, potentially making uh, solar systems. And so this is kind of like a brand new star cluster in the making. And then this one right here is just a, another region with some, some uh, nebula uh, present.